presenter will be Juravel from the well-known organization CSKB Progress Russia. And today we have well, Russian majors, well representative NITP, CSKB Progress, GRAT, others, which gives us a Good afternoon, uh, distinguished participants of the forum. I'm happy to welcome you a little bit uh, about myself. Me and Mr. Fedosev represent the Center of Information Technology of Remote Sensing Data, a Thematic Processing Subdivision. My presentation uh, will be devoted uh, to aspects and uh, issues that we came across as we started to process the data. A few words about the terminology. Multi-spectral sensors are those that have uh, several uh, channels. Hyperspectral sensors operate in several tens or hundreds of narrower channels with a width of 50 nanometers. Hyperspectral signature is the key term. That's the ratio of reflectivity of an object uh, to the wavelength. So you can see images that you can get with multispectral equipment and uh, hyperspectrum. We can see major differences between these two. Some background information. Until recently, in the orbit, there were only two satellites with hyperspectral equipment, and both of them were launched in the early 2000s. This is an American satellite, io one with Hyperion sensor, and a European satellite, Probo. At the same time, we carried out some information search and found out that at the moment, in designing stages in different countries, there are various projects uh, to uh, design hyperspectral uh, satellites. Uh, one of the first such uh, implemented project was our satellite, uh, Resource P. But since it was launched relatively recently, and it's now going through final stages of uh, flight testing, in our s studies we used open source information. That is the one we obtained from e uh, one in particular for a Samara region area. So how does uh, uh, the data could take shape based on the example of Samara region? During the scanning of Earth's surface using dispersion device, a multi-dimensional image is getting formed where two coordinates uh, record the spatial location of objects and the third coordinate provides spectral characteristics. Each pixel ends up having its own uh, spectral range, which makes it possible for us to identify objects. One of the peculiarities of uh, processing hyperspectral data is uh, meteorological influence. As they g go through uh, sun, uh, through atmosphere, there is sun radiation. It's just there are aerosols and gases in the atmosphere, and we can see some uh, several absorption um, uh, channels uh, by ozones and uh, water vapors. So this informa the information um, that you find in image also reflects the weather conditions at the moment of imaging. To fix this. A procedure of atmospheric uh, correction is uh, utilized uh, where a special equ equ equation is used, and there are four components, direct and dispersed, um, that goes uh, onto the um, uh, pixel projection, a signal from smoke, and signals from uh, uh, neighboring pixels that also uh, leave an impact. On this slide, you can see spectral characteristics of several types of materials before and after atmospheric correction. So we can see reduction of signal in the uh, blue uh, segment, uh, the most um, dispersion prone, as we know. And also, there is no fall 
at the 940 uh, meters point. This is where uh, vapors are used. We can do this uh, for mapping, uh, creating uh, plans, monitoring purposes. And secondly, we can also use this uh, for detecting rarely found objects or objects that have mm, a smaller, a little smaller in terms of uh, a pixel projection, some artificial objects. There are several categories of methods that can be used to process hyperspectral images. Part of them uh, can be used for multispectrum. First of all, building indexed images, which everyone knows about. The second part is uh, carrying out controlled uh, classification applicable to multispectrum as well. Thirdly, reducing uh, sampling. As we all know, the hyperspectral images contain redundant information. Uh, therefore, uh, you can apply the method of main components and independent components. And uh, fourthly, and this is the method applying to um, hyperspectrum only, is sub-pixel processing. There is one peculiarity, though. Since uh, spatial resolution is fairly low, 30 meters, and the sensor detects all radiation falling under pixel projection, we get the mixed pixel that is the mixed characteristic of all the spectrum that got into this uh, imaging element. Therefore, it is necessary to find a way to manage uh, mixed uh, pixels, divide them. Also, there are no identical uh, materials, and there are always uh, some variations within these materials, which we must take account during processing. I will now show an example with the same image using this, uh, different methods. First, you build indexed images. This is uh, NDVI index is uh, one of the simplest ones that you can apply to multispectrum as well. It's on your left top. The other four indices are built, uh, taking into account uh, preset wavelength. It takes into account uh, some signs of uh, vegetation uh, where biologists are knowledgeable. We also found spectral characteristics of water, where there is algal bloom going on which was typical of uh, 2010 in the Samara region. Uh, this year, also, there was algal bloom, ex rapid algal bloom in Volga, so we thought how we can fix this using uh, spectral uh, data. So here in this graph, we can see uh, some characteristics, falls and uh, rises. And uh, use these uh, lows and highs, we can th build three um, indexed images. Then we generate the range of distribution of alga, algae in the water. Then we superimpose a water mask on it uh, using um, in, in infrared uh, um, channels near infrared. And this gives us the area of distribution of uh, algae. We can see that this is a water body and there is forest adjoining it and uh, in RGB it's uh, they're not distinguishable and it's only through our mm, multispectral uh, hyperspectral that we were able to distinguish between them the next method is uh, uh, classification by SAM uh, method you can see the forest and several types of forest uh, some uh, with ripe mm, cereals other with uh, early um, yields. So once again, in hyperspectrum, we can identify a larger number of um, classes. In multispectrum, they are all um, merged. Uh, the next method is classification by uh, PCA 
method. We identified nine classes and uh, tried to identify the same classing, classic using uh, Ali uh, sensor. But once again, some of the classes merged into one. The area of primary interest was the processing by ICA method, independent uh, component assessment method that allows you to identify rarely found object. Once again, resolution is only 30 meters. There are no clean pixels here, so we try to uh, detect uh, road surface and dirt roads between the fields and some elements of uh, uh, city housings and uh, we were able to identify uh, some of such elements. Another interesting example is uh, detection by MF method, mutual uh, uh, f filtration. Uh, we preset some kind of uh, benchmark or standard and then we try to identify objects that would match this standard. So we analyzed the full image and found that uh, we have several sections that match the benchmark even though in RGB uh, mode they were totally indiscernible. At the bottom uh, we took the spectrum of road surfacing and we assumed that our roads on both sides are mm, surrounded by vegetation. And uh, in the end, uh, we obtained the clear distinction of uh, road surfacing in the shape of a, of a highway. The MF method allows you uh, to assume a share of certain material within a specific pixel. A share of distribution of such materials is shown on your left, on your right. With this, uh, I wanted to end my presentation. Let me also add that all these methods have their own benefits and uh, disadvantages. Uh, when we classify, all pixels r relate to one class class alone. We cannot divide classes. And if we divide uh, mixes, then uh, we need to have some preset uh, standards, reference standards. And that's why our company continues to take this research forward and try to create a multi-level monitoring observation system with space uh, segment, aviation, aerial segment, and uh, ground observation. Thank you very much, Irina Nikolaevna. We do hope that uh, uh, there will be another presentation at one of the next conferences on your practical uh, considerations. Uh, actually, we wanted to show these results already, but we didn't have for this one week. Now, how about those questions? Victor Lavlov, in a tear. We discussed this question earlier. So, can we say that 192 is the final figure, final number of uh, channels? You mean like this is the maximum number of channels possible? There is a lot of argument about how many channels can there be. The arguments will continue, I'm sure, because if we analyze uh, foreign uh, import um, hyperspectrums, they can include uh, the areas uh, up to 2.2 uh, micrometers. And I know that uh, you can distinguish between organics and non-organics even further, th so we will try to expand the range even further. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, no. Thank you very much once again.